This is my favourite thing that I've ever written in a card. <laughs> no one wants to die alone, tied up in a shed, having been tortured for days. So be my Valentine. <laughs> Anonymity is key to the success of that. <laughs> Valentine's is easy. All you need to do is get a card with a couple of hearts on it and go for the traditional message. I tend to go for the, you know, the really old-fashioned sentiment. I love you. There I said it. Now will you please let me do it up the bum? <laughs> that started a conversation. Great. <laughs> Valentine's is weird, isn't it? Because it's the one day of the year where you get anonymous mail from a stranger saying, I'd like to fuck you, and you go, oh. <laughs> Any other day, that's stalking. <laughs> and I found that out the hard way. <laughs> uh, you guys are a couple, right? How long have you been together? A year and a bit. OK, so long-term relationship, a year and a bit you've been together. How annoyed would you be, madam, on a scale between one and fucking very... <laughs> ..if next Valentine's he said to you, uh, yeah, I booked a restaurant, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I spoke to the maitre d'. Yeah. Ronald, I think his name was. <laughs> he was either the maitre d' or a five-star general, cos he had the whole bit, aren't he? <laughs> I've organised a table for two and he recommends the filet fish <laughs> Are there any couples in this evening? Give us a shout, the couples. <laughs> oh, lots of couples in tonight. This is a bit silly, I think. Uh, but for Valentine's, I got my girlfriend sex vouchers as her present. <laughs> I didn't realise they were transferable. <laughs> Turns out they accept them at her work. <laughs> you get to the stage in a long-term relationship where you want to experiment sexually. But, you know, it can be awkward. And what if she finds out? <laughs> I'm ten years into a relationship now. Anyone be there anyone longer than ten years? <laughs> What's the longest we got in the room? 13. Th 13? 26. 26. Anyone more than 26? 28? More than 28? How, how long? For, sorry? You, you've, been you've been together for 43 years? I think. Come on, 43 years. Now, I obviously... I don't know what it's like after 43 years. I think that's an extraordinary commitment, especially in this day and age. That is quite something. But I don't know if it's the same for you, because I've only been together with my girl for 10 years, but things have got quite predictable in the bedroom. <laughs> now, when I lower my entire ball bag into her mouth, <laughs> she is pretty much guaranteed to wake up. <laughs> same? Oh, you couldn't see that? He just went, yeah, same. <laughs> <laughs> you look worried on their behalf. They've been married 43 years. Don't panic. They've tried everything. <laughs> Who, what's your relationship with them? What, how do you know them? <laughs> That's your mum and dad. <laughs> oh. That's nice. <laughs> well, I hope the image of your dad teabagging your mum hasn't... <laughs> I hope... I, for one... <laughs> I don't know about looking your parents in the eyes again. I don't think you'll be able to drink tea. <laughs> Hi. 80% of personal ads say good sense of humour required. And the reason 80% of personal ads say good sense of humour required is because everything else in the personal ad is a lie. <laughs> you turn up on the blind date, she says, I know I said I was petite and pretty. <laughs> But you've got to laugh. <laughs> you think, yeah, I notice it also says you enjoy long walks, which is handy because you can fuck right off. <laughs> There's quite a lot of couples in. I can see lots of couples around the place. Have you all had the sexual history conversation? Not all of you, clearly. <laughs> The sexual history conversation happens about three, four, five months into a relationship, and the, the woman says to the man, I'd like to know about your sexual history. And the man thinks, well, no, you fucking wouldn't. <laughs> but the woman doesn't just ask once. She keeps on asking until she gets a result. Yeah? I had this recently. I was cornered. I had to have the sexual history conversation. I had to list every woman I'd ever been with, from the girl I lost my virginity to, right the way up to her. And that is where I should have stopped. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Are you all familiar with the Spider-Man? Yes? yes. <laughs> the sexual practice. Don't panic, I'll explain. The Spider-Man is a sexual practice whereby you're making love to a woman from behind. That's key to this operation. You're just about to arrive. You've got your happy face on. You look like a turtle shitting. <laughs> you pull out, catch Spider-Man. <laughs> I realise many of you are looking at me thinking, well, why did he tell us that? That sounds horrible. It sounds very aggressive, not very romantic and loving. But the reason I'm telling you is because men are such bad communicators, especially at times of high emotion like a breakup. So, gentlemen, I don't think you ever need to have that awkward, it's not me, it's you conversation again. I think next time, when you think the relationship has run its course, simply Spider-Man. <laughs> she will either think, that was brilliant. <laughs> In which case, she's a keeper. <laughs> or... <laughs> this is over, isn't it? <laughs> So I was going to give you some advice about relationships and, you know, that sort of thing. I thought we might talk to the single men first. Who are the single men? Give us a shout. Yeah. Mm. Mm. <laughs> Said the single men. Yeah, that's probably why you're single. <laughs> OK. If you're on a date with a woman, do tell her you've got feelings for her. Don't tell her it's an erection. <laughs> do walk her home. Don't follow her home. <laughs> do surprise her. Don't wear a balaclava. <laughs> do offer to pay for dinner. Don't offer to pay for anything else. <laughs> Unless it's Tracy, in which case a bag of chips will get you laid. <laughs> hey, Tracy. <laughs> it's a good indicator that a woman fancies you if when you're talking to her, she touches her hair. If it's her pubic hair, it's a cert. <laughs> Women like the strong, silent type. That's because when we're quiet, they think we're listening. <laughs> what are you like, ladies? It can be a bit depressing being a single man, it can be, can be a bit of a bore lake. I've got an inspirational story, this will cheer you up. It concerns my friend Emily. She's beautiful, she's intelligent, and she's funny. She's a triple threat. She's on a date with a guy about two months ago, they're having dinner across from each other. The main course arrives, lasagna as it happens, okay? He leans across to her plate, takes a massive bit of her lasagna, boom, eats it. Without saying anything. Does it again like 30 seconds later, another massive bit, boom, eats it. Off her plate. Does it for the third time, boom. All she said was, what are you doing? He came back with this, he said, I'm paying for it, aren't I? <laughs> I know. <laughs> the reason I think that's an inspirational story, she still fucked him. <laughs> I can't believe he's lucky, got laid and had half a lasagna. <laughs> Is anyone actually on a date this evening? I can see a few people I think might be on dates, but I, I don't want to kind of embarrass you because Dates are anxious enough anyway. They're fraught with anxiety, aren't they, being on a date? Because you don't know when you're going to move in for the kiss, you don't know how it's going to end up later on. They're just, they're weird and awkward. So I'd like to break the ice for you. If I'm, I'll break the ice for you. Yeah. Why not suggest fucking in the disabled toilets? <laughs> That's what they're for. That's why they've got that handrail for more exotic positioning. <laughs> well, let's talk about love and romance and sex. Let's talk about sex. Glasgow, there's a very commonly held belief that men think about sex every seven seconds, which I think makes talking to your dad creepy. <laughs> British men spend on average 22 minutes on foreplay. Of course, that is spread out between all of us over the course of a year. <laughs> Women who read romance novels have twice as much sex as the national average. While well, I say sex, what I mean is they yield the precious softness of their silken female innocence <laughs> to the crushing firmness of his intent. <laughs> Sorry, I came over all Catherine Cooks in there. <laughs> it's not a great phrase to use. <laughs> That'd be like painting the fourth bridge. <laughs> the average person has two pounds of meat lodged in their colon. So come on, love. <laughs> this is the first one that I placed. I put it in the, uh, in the personals. It's um, incurable romantic, seeks filthy whore. <laughs> this one's slightly more optimistic than that. It's a bit more ambitious. Albino, he, she, seek similar. 
Now, I've not had any responses to that as yet. <laughs> but as soon as I get two, I'm going to set up a blind date. They won't be able to believe their luck. <laughs> the only reason I could possibly think of to order a flaming Zambuca when sober is if you meet a girl and she's something just a little bit special. <laughs> yeah? Maybe you've been out on two or three dates. You've established she's beautiful, she's intelligent, she's funny. You think you might be in love with her. You think she might be the one. But she's got a bit of a problem with facial hair on the top lip. <laughs> That can be an awkward thing to bring up. <laughs> Much better, I think. Take her out for a drink. <laughs> Two flaming Zambucas, please. <laughs> no, 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 they're both for you. <laughs> Let's talk about gifts, because gifts are very important when you're in a relationship. They show your partner how you feel about them. This is interesting. My girlfriend suggested last Christmas that we limit ourselves to £20 for each other's presents. But I wasn't thinking about spending that kind of money. <laughs> Obviously, if you're buying gifts for a woman, it's pretty easy. You just go for the classics. You know, champagne, chocolates, flowers. Unless you're dating an alcoholic bulimic with hay fever. <laughs> I buy my girlfriend flowers every week because I really fancy the girl in the florist. <laughs> I've told the girl in the florist my girlfriend's dead. <laughs> I thought it was a good idea at the time. It slightly backfired. You try explaining to your other half why you got her a wreath four weeks in a row. <laughs> Obviously, different flowers express different emotions. So, for example, red flowers say passion. Yellow flowers say love. And self-raising flower says, make me a cake. <laughs> My girlfriend said recently, she said, we need some romance in our lives. So I took the hint, I booked a hotel, flowers, chocolate, champagne, petals on the bed, the full bit, ended up having incredible sex. Of course, it turned out she wanted me to take her. <laughs> What's the fucking point of that? I live with her. <laughs> She'll be there when I get back. <laughs> Put the kettle on, love and fucking knackered. <laughs> I'm not saying I feel cheated, but when we got together, she said to me, she said, I'm very liberal about sex. I don't care what people do, as long as they're consenting adults and no one gets hurt. There's always a catch, isn't there? <laughs> no one gets hurt. Consenting. <laughs> adults. <laughs> Basically, no fun. <laughs> any, any others? Yeah. Is it in yet? <laughs> so, have you said to this boy here, this, uh, there's a man covering his eyes now with a. <laughs> oh, God, she hasn't. That's not your boyfriend. I'm sure you don't limit yourself to one. Um, <laughs> then... <laughs> but you've said to a man, is it in yet? <laughs> you, but you've said that to him, you've looked a man in the eyes and gone, is it in, is it in yet? Well, you don't want to look down and check and you've got no feeling in your vagina whatsoever. <laughs> so without... Well, hang on, just make eye contact with me. Without looking down, can you tell if there's a cock in you now? <laughs> what was your one? My grand's in hospital. My grand's in hospital. <laughs> you were fucking someone and they said to you, my grand's in hospital. <laughs> oh, yeah, baby, tell it like it is. <laughs> Yeah, I'm gonna break your hips. <laughs> <laughs> Any other mundane things during sex? There's the ice cream van. There's the ice cream van. <laughs> Did you start going out with him when you were quite a lot younger? <laughs> oh, there's the ice cream van. Shh, 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 shh. Most natural thing in the world. <laughs> I had one the other week, a guy came in with his wife. They'd been married like 30 years. And she had said to him, and she said she'd said it, OK? She said to him, during sex, she said, now I've got your full attention, let's talk about those curtains. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I'd been him, I would have gone, curtains look fine. <laughs> Another one that comes up a lot, you're boring me. Which my response would be, yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what this says about us as a nation, but one that comes up all the time from audiences is uh, change channels. <laughs> Are we having sex with the television on, people? Change channels. I think if someone said change channels to me, I think, well, I would know they were talking about the television, but I would be very tempted to go, Thanks very much. <laughs> I don't mind if I do.
Of course, the classic is, uh, Celia needs doing. <laughs> Hopefully not in that voice. Of course, a lot of women don't want to have sex on a first date, even if they want to have sex on a first date, because they think if they have sex on a first date, it makes them a slag or a slut or something. Well, not anymore, ladies. You're going to have to do more than that to be a slag these days. Am I right, Tracy? <laughs> I'm just saying that like, having sex on a first date just means you wanted to have sex on a first date. That's all it means. To be a slag these days, you're going to have to do so much more. I've got friends that are slags. My friend Louise is a slag. She's got five kids by seven different dads. <laughs> She's got a speech impediment that prevents her from saying no. Well, I say it's a speech impediment, it's actually a cock in her mouth. <laughs> She's such a slag, the council trims her bush. <laughs> I've, got, I've got a question. I've got a question for the men. Have you ever seen a woman so unattractive to you, it makes you question your sexuality? I'll explain, because for me it would be like Gillian McKeith. You know the woman from How Clean Is Your Poo? <laughs> Weird looking creature. So if you put Gillian McKeith there and Brad Pitt there, and you said to me, your life depends on it, you've got to do it with one of them. You've got to make the beast with two backs. Do the sticky belly. <laughs> what? I would think, right, I'm a heterosexual man, Gillian is a woman, Gillian is. Oh. <laughs> ah. Jesus. <laughs> Give it here. <laughs> Is that bad? Does that make me half rice, half chips? <laughs> you were right. Well, what, okay, let me give you a moral dilemma. What's your name? I didn't get your name, Ali. Marcus. Marcus. Okay. Moral dilemma for you. All right. Anne Widdicombe, George Clooney, if you had to. <coughs> You'd go for Anne Widdicombe? Ah. Oh, you mental. <laughs> she's got a face like a bulldog licking the piss off a nettle. <laughs> and she's a hell of a size, you're a slip of a lad, she'd fuck you in half. <laughs> and that is only where your problems begin, because I imagine her peachy pouch, her la la, her foo foo, her Wendy, <laughs> her special lady garden, call it what you will, I bet it looks like a badger that's been hit with a shotgun. <laughs> I bet there are police divers that would be squeamish about going down on that. <laughs> I bet it looks like a bulldog eating mayonnaise. <laughs> I bet George Clooney's got the prettiest cock you've ever seen. <laughs> Why don't you just spit roaster? You're suggesting I double team <laughs> Anne Widdicombe with George Clooney. <laughs> Now that is a celebrity sex tape that would sell. <laughs> <laughs> they say don't masturbate, you'll go blind. Yeah, only if you get it in your eyes. <laughs> Aim away. Who do you think about when you masturbate? <laughs> Her. So do I, she's lovely. That was a good answer. You think about your partner when you masturbate. I think I'll put my hand on my heart, speak on behalf of every man in here and say, when we masturbate, we think about you, ladies. We think about our partners, our wives and our girlfriends. Yeah. We think... <laughs> we do. I do. I always think of my girlfriend. I think, Ocean's walk in. <laughs> she doesn't even know I've got these magazines. <laughs> do you ever do this, Glasgow? Do you ever get asked to do the washing up and you do it really badly on purpose so you never get asked again? Do you do that? <laughs> my girlfriend does that with blowjobs. Seriously, her blowjobs suck. <laughs> and it's not just me, a lot of my friends have commented. <laughs> my girlfriend likes to have the lights on during sex. Yeah, because she likes to be able to read. <laughs> Which I think is to be encouraged in a girl of her age. <laughs> I'm kidding! <laughs> She's actually scared of the dark. <laughs> That divides people, though, doesn't it? Some people like the lights on, some people always have to have the lights off. I like the lights on during sex. My best mate likes to have the lights off. And fair enough, his missus is a pig. <laughs> My girlfriend and I, we do a little bit of role-play in the bedroom. I pretend to be a swarthy Italian Lothario, and she pretends to be asleep. <laughs> she gets pretty into it as well. Sometimes she's there for seven or eight hours. 
My girlfriend always says, you never tell me how much you love me. I don't want to upset her. <laughs> a couple of weeks ago, we were making love, and she had, well, she had an asthma attack. I did briefly think I was doing really rather well. <laughs> then about sort of the 90-second, two-minute mark, I thought, hang on, she's laying this on a bit thick. <laughs> Either she wants something or she's not well. And she wasn't well. I totally panicked. I didn't know what to do. So I phoned a friend of mine who's a doctor and he lives just down the road from me, and I said to him, you know, what should I do? He said, well, yeah, don't panic. It could be quite serious. It probably isn't, but I'll pop right over. I said, what should I do in the meantime? He said, finish yourself off. <laughs> Having sex with someone at work is all right. As long as you don't work in a primary school. <laughs> Are you all aware of what snowballing is? The sexual practice of snowballing? Yeah. One bloke down. <laughs> Who was that down there? Quite proud of that. Well done. <laughs> Everyone else, none the way. OK, well, I'll explain. It says something about you. <laughs> snowballing is a sexual practice where having administered oral sex, your partner doesn't spit or swallow so much as return to sender via a kiss. Oh, you're looking shocked and appalled as I explain that to you. Let me assure you, I found out the hard way. <laughs> Someone said that the other day, Marcus. Someone was as macho as you the other day. They went, uh, well, yeah, Anne Whittacombe, just put a bag over her head. <laughs> really? <laughs> Has that ever happened, ladies? <laughs> How low would your self-esteem have to be <laughs> that you would fuck a guy who's just gone, can I just...? <laughs> That's better. Chat-up line. Let's do some chat-up lines, OK? Obviously, the best chat-up line is, will you hold my pint while I go for a shit? <laughs> Steve, everyone. And his brilliant chat-up line, if you were a soup, <laughs> what flavour of soup would you be? <laughs> I, I, well, I think that's right up there with... Does this rag smell of chloroform to you? <laughs> and the evergreen, let's not turn this rape into a murder. <laughs> <clears throat> the problem with chat-up lines is you know whether they're going to work pretty much immediately. You know straight away whether the girl's thinking you're a dick or buy us a drink, OK? So I've written some abort mission lines for you, so you could be sort of halfway through a chat-up scenario and you can abort the mission if you think it's going badly, right? So it would work like this. You would say, do you want to dance? She'd have a face like thunder. You'd go, can I have your seat? <laughs> yeah. Did you hurt yourself when you fell from heaven? Because it looks like you landed on your face. <laughs> I've never seen a more beautiful woman in my life. So can you move? <laughs> Here's ten pence, ring your mum. Tell her be round in half an hour to fuck her. <laughs> Get your coat you've pulled. Hang on, wait, you probably don't own a coat. Girls your size tend not to feel the cold. <laughs> and my... I said to my girlfriend, I said, on Saturday, how would you like to go shopping with the girls, get yourself some new shoes, get your hair done in a different style, and then go out for a couple of bottles of Chardonnay? She said, that sounds brilliant. I said, good, because we're breaking up. <laughs> <laughs> um, any other ultimate sexual fantasies? My girlfriend. My girlfriend. <laughs> well, maybe we could double team her. <laughs> My girlfriend is your ultimate sexual fantasy. <laughs> yes, people see my girlfriend and they see me and they say, she's only going out with you because you're famous. And I say, but I am famous. <laughs> What's your point? <laughs> is, is that your girlfriend? That is my girlfriend. That's your girlfriend? <laughs> I'm not going to swap if that's OK. <laughs> It's very difficult to get dirty talk right. Have you noticed this? It's very difficult to get dirty talk right. Like, in a long-term relationship, it's fine, because you know where your boundaries are, you know your partner. But on a one-night stand, fraught with danger. I've got a story concerning a friend of mine. He's quite good at pulling. We were all at a party together, and he pulled a girl that none of us knew. Ended up back at her place that night having sex. Well done him. High five. <laughs> so he told us the story the next day. He said she started it. They were, they were having sex. She said, talk dirty to me. Or more accurately, Talk dirty to me. <laughs> so from the roller decks of filth in his head, he came forth with this. And this would be fine for many of the ladies here. Within the confines of the bedroom, within the boudoir, this would be an OK thing to say. With a long-term, loving, trusting partner. On a one-night stand, maybe not. 
he said, You love it, you slut. <laughs> she said, I'm not a slut. And there was a very awkward moment. Awkward as moments can be when you've just insulted someone your balls deep in. <laughs> he apologized profusely, needless to say, and they moved on. <laughs> I imagine there's a story there, man. <laughs> right, some sex tips. Let's try and be grown up about this, yeah? Gentlemen, if you're having sex with a new partner for the first time, never take a run up. <laughs> I know what you like, you want to make a good first impression, but you don't want to actually leave a dent. <laughs> a lot of women don't like it if you leave your socks on during sex, but I always leave one on because I don't want to get her pregnant. <laughs> hmm. Some women don't like to have the lights on, but it can't be helped in my case because they come on automatically when I open the car door. <laughs> and then they stay on for 20 seconds, so it is over. <laughs> this isn't advice, this is more of a reminder, and it's a reminder to men in long-term relationships, because standards can slide as a relationship goes on. Just a reminder for the men in long-term relationships, it is never acceptable, never acceptable, yeah, to answer the phone when lovemaking. Even if you hilariously pick up by saying, I can't talk now, I'm going into a tunnel. <laughs> Some common myths you may have heard. These are just myths, they're not true. The best lubricant for anal sex is not tears. <laughs> it's blood. I bought some KY jelly, it said on the box not to be taken internally. I thought, why do they think it's fucking going? <laughs> <laughs> if you are going to have sex, I can't stress this enough, if you're going to have sex with someone that you don't know, always, always, always ask. <laughs> Very important. Let's talk about sexual health, shall we? Uh, STDs, STIs and the like, because there's a big difference, my young friend, between giving a girl goosebumps and giving her a rash. <laughs> now, I don't know if anyone's seen any of the other TV shows that I made. I make a show called Distraction at the moment. Has anyone seen that? Yeah. Oh, just about everyone. And one person liked it. <laughs> well, that's good. If I can entertain just one man, I'll have been shit. The <laughs> no, Distractions are quite good. It's, it's Channel 4's replacement to Sex in the City. Just imagine the city is Dundee and the sex is anal. You get the idea. <laughs> a lot of people like to smoke cigarettes after sex, but you can't buy cigarettes until you're 16, so I have to get them for both of us. <laughs> you think it's wrong I'm buying a 15-year-old girl cigarettes? <laughs> you think it's wrong I'm fucking her? <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> Kidding does sound like a verb for child abuse, doesn't it? <laughs> I'm kidding. Are you joking or touching kids? <laughs> a lot of men like it when the collars and cuffs match, but I wouldn't want to date a bald lady. <laughs> that took you a while to get. <laughs> Apparently, women like chocolate because it stimulates them in the same way as sex, which I think goes some way towards explaining the popularity of the chunky Kit Kat. I've never found chocolate to be an aphrodisiac. The only way a chocolate bar is going to help my sexual performance is if I use it as a splint. <laughs> or bait. <laughs> I've got a friend that took me to one side recently. He said, what does it mean if on a first date a girl puts a cheeky finger up your bum whilst fellating you? I said, it means there's going to be a second date. Wondering, does anyone have this arrangement in their relationship? It's becoming ever more common now for couples to have an arrangement whereby they're totally faithful to each other, but they've got a clause whereby if one of them was to meet a certain celebrity, they would be allowed to stray. <laughs> Has anyone got that going on in their relationship? Who have you got? You. <laughs> right. I notice that you're sitting next to a lady. <laughs> You're going to do what when you go home? She's going to kill you? Yeah. Right. Or strap one on and fuck you, certainly. 
I don't think speed cameras are fair. Who's with me? Yeah. I can't see how they're fair. If I'm driving home from this gig at 12 midnight, yeah, and there's kids playing in the street, they've got bigger problems than me. <laughs> well, not anymore, they haven't, but... <laughs> but let's say I'm driving home from this gig, 12 midnight, let's say I'm doing 40 in a 30 zone, I get flashed by one of those cameras. How is it fair that my girlfriend gets three points on her licence? <laughs> That doesn't seem fair to me. She's already got 12 points. <laughs> She's going to have to go to jail. <laughs> My girlfriend used to get annoyed with me because I used to leave the toilet seat up, so I don't do that anymore. Always, always put it down. Because yeah. it's a woman that I love and I want to spend the rest of my life with. It's only a little thing, but a little means a lot. Yeah. Hmm. Of course, there's no winning with her. Now she's annoyed because it's covered in piss. <laughs> Here's an interesting thing, this is weird. You can have sex in this country when you're 16, but you can't buy pornography until you're 18. That's an odd law, isn't it? So you can have sex when you're 16, but you're not allowed to watch other people have sex for another two years. So if you're 16, you can have sex, just don't look down. <laughs> My girlfriend said to me, during sex, she said, did you remember to lock the front door? I said, yeah, there's no way you're going to escape. <laughs> I'd like to talk about a sex act that I don't fully understand. Are you all familiar with the 69, yes? No, I like the 69 as much as the next man. <laughs> Hoping he isn't man, that would be terrible. <laughs> well, I like the 69, but I don't, I don't really understand it because it's an incredibly intimate thing to do with another human being. But how does the 69 ever occur? It only ever happens when, when the, the man says to the woman, would you do that thing that I like? And the woman goes, yeah, all right, but only if you do that thing that I like. And the man goes, not a problem, away you go. And the woman says, no, because the last time I did the thing that you liked, you were a little bit sleepy afterwards. <laughs> you fucked off to sleep. You said, we'll call it a 68. It's like a 69, but I owe you one. <laughs> I like everything about the 69 apart from the view. <laughs> Being working class is very much like masturbation. It's nothing to be ashamed of. Of course, it's nothing to be proud of either. <laughs> and both give you calluses on your hands. Sting, the popular singer, Sting's often bragging about his eight-hour night sex sessions with his wife, Trudy. Imagine how long he'd be able to keep it up if she was a looker. <laughs> Have you ever had this? My girlfriend made me fire our cleaner because she said the cleaner was too good-looking and she didn't want her in the house. How mental is that? She was a really good cleaner. She was especially good at getting spunk out of hair. <laughs> My girlfriend asked me recently one of, the, one of the big questions in life. She said to me, do you want to have children? I thought about it. I thought, God, is there any truer expression of the love that you have for another person than to have a child with them? Because really that is a bond that lasts forever. It's not like getting married. Marriages break up. But having a child together, you know you're going to be bonded through that child for the rest of your life. And then I thought about the money. I thought, how expensive is it bringing up a child? It's apparently the most expensive thing you can do. It costs £100,000 to bring up a child up to the age of 18. It's an incredible amount of money. It's not like buying a house where you can sell it on. It doesn't appreciate, that's just gone. <laughs> and then I thought about the education of the child. Would I send it to state school or private school? I'm doing all right. I might think about private school, but I'd probably end up sending it to state school. And then, you know, maybe I'd compromise on that, become a bit of a hypocrite, end up reading the Daily Mail, going to parent-teacher meetings, <laughs> becoming my dad. It'd be awful. <laughs> and then I thought, I thought more about, well, why am I thinking about having a child? Why don't I think about adopting a child? Isn't it just about the family unit and love rather than just having a little mini-me running around the place? And then, then I thought about how much it would mean to, to have my family name live on and, you know, what that would mean to my, my nearest and dearest. And then, then I thought again about the relationship with my girlfriend, how that would change, how I'd probably end up calling her mum or something, you know, be, would really sort of change that. And then you know, it would change my life and probably ruin it. Uh, anyway, I sort of weighed up all the pros and all the cons, and, and in the end I said no. <laughs> of course, by then I'd come. <laughs> Luckily, all over her tits. <laughs> A new book's come out called Better Than Sex with Claire Rayner. A lot of things in that fucking category. <laughs> I'm struggling to think of anything that wouldn't make the mark. I woke up with an erection this morning, on reflection, I wish it had been my own. <laughs> if you know the difference between a kayak and a canoe, you probably don't know what it's like to have sex. <laughs> I bought my girlfriend a book called Cheap and Easy Vegetarian Cooking, which is ideal for her because not only is she a vegetarian, <laughs> She's reading a book at the moment called Women That Love Too Much, which I think could have the title shortened to Sluts. <laughs> I've got an awkward question for you. It's awkward whether you're here on a first date or whether you're in a long-term relationship. It's awkward for everyone. Should you spit or swallow following oral sex? Goggles. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
Well, there's a fella there that loves the taste of sponge. <laughs> Now, it's an awkward question. It's very much the cutting edge of sexual politics. I'm going to sort this out for you once and for all. You'll never have to think about it again, ladies and gentlemen. Should you spit or swallow following oral sex, it doesn't matter. Once I've ejaculated, I'm asleep. <laughs> you can do what you fucking like. You can gargle the national anthem, for all I care. As long as it doesn't wake me up or interfere with you calling your cab. <laughs> Do you know what the most common crime is in Wales? Have a guess. Well, guess. Sheep shagging? <laughs> well, that's rather insulting, isn't it? <laughs> and to add insult to injury, you're wrong. It's not sheep shagging. It's actually ram raiding. <laughs> the second most common crime is having sex with a minor. <laughs> if anyone's offended, just look for the other meaning. You'll be fine. My girlfriend said to me recently, we can't have sex, I've got a headache. I said, I'm going to be right at the other end. <laughs> Do you want to get back to me if you get a pain in your JJ? <laughs> That's right, I said, JJ, what of it? <laughs> a couple of weeks ago, I failed to perform sexually. <laughs> well, how is that a laughing matter? <laughs> a couple of weeks ago, I failed to perform sexually. I'm not going to go into detail. Suffice it to say, I arrived early. My girlfriend said, don't worry, that happens to a lot of guys. I said, right, there's two things I'm at with that. <laughs> Firstly, who are these a lot of guys? <laughs> and secondly, if it's happening to more than one of us, don't you think it could be your fault? <laughs> she says there's never an excuse to raise your hand to a woman. What if you've got a question? <laughs> she says that because she's a woman, she's good at doing two things at the same time. If that's the case, why is the threesome out of the question? <laughs> I said to my girlfriend, I said, uh, you shouldn't eat before you go swimming. She said, why? I said, you look fat. <laughs> a lot of people say modern art is pretentious, but I look at it like this. <laughs> boxers, boxers don't have sex before a fight. Do you know what that is? They don't fancy each other. <laughs> the reason I mention it is because I've got an arrangement with my girlfriend whereby if I ever get the opportunity to sleep with Kylie Minogue, she can fuck off. <laughs> if you like fast-paced, edgy one-liners, get ready to be happy. Uh, I'm announcing a new tour. It's called Jimmy Carr Laughs Funny. And I'll be touring all around the world. Come and see me. If you don't like fast-paced, edgy jokes, then it's not for you. Um, you know, get some perspective. Maybe uh, they're just jokes. <laughs>